So in June, I can't remember if it was June or I think it was July, my good friend Carrie McKay, who searched a couple years straight, contacted me and said that there was this uh, reporter who was wanting to do a story about me and what we do. And I guess he, you know, has heard through the grapevine, through search and rescue and law enforcement about me. One day he reached out to me and we chatted on the phone for a good, man, a good couple hours. And he wanted to do a series of outdoor stories on us where he wanted to come out with us on missions and, you know, tell our, our story over, you know, a few editorials. I agreed to it and he was going to bring a, a photographer, an outdoor photographer with us and we had you know the, the August I think it was like 12th to the 16th search planned and I told him I was like well we got one coming up here you know mid-August a search if you want to come out during it and he agreed he's like well let me see you know if my editor will can get this going and he ended up getting it going and so on the on the 14th was one of the days that they were gonna come out with us. They stayed in the motel. We stayed out on the on our, where our new forward operating base was at, and we already spent one day me and the team searching around. And then the next day, um, when they were to come out, we were gonna search that day as well. And the following days. But we're pretty much just, you know, storm trooping straight up the mountain, kind of in different teams. It was me and the Eli, the writer and photographer, three other people, Kevin Darries, Jordan, and Mel. And they were kind of, you know, three together and us three together. And we kind of were, you know, a good hundred, not a hundred yards, but a hundred feet to a couple hundred feet away from each other we all had radios Eli's talking to me trying to get my story so I'm getting you know pictures taken of me we'd stop sometimes we'd all group together and hang out and take a break and talk and then we'd separate and cruise up and we you know we started out at like 1200 foot elevation and we're trying to get to 4500 feet just straight up through the most gnarly, as you can tell, uh, the most gnarly jungle. That's the best way to put it up there. Is it's a jungle. You know, that was the day we they had all kind of transpired. So we go to you know have our next break, but this time we weren't breaking together because we kind of spread ourselves out. We're all talking on, you know, radio, seeing where's everybody's at. And Kevin ended up drifting off by himself. He just <laughs> and left uh, Mel and Jordan together. So I told everybody's like, okay, we're taking a taking a break. Everybody stop, eat something, and then after break, we'll all condense again. Okay, yep, sounds good. And, you know, we'd break for 15, 20 minutes. All of a sudden, you know, we're bullshitting, talking, and me and Eli and Tyler. Well, all of a sudden, over the radio, here comes Kevin. He's like, hey, uh, what's Rachel's sleeping pad color? I respond, it's orange. What color was her backpack? Like, green, why? And he's like, get up here, I found her. And we were like, what? We're on our way. So we stormtrooped to where he was at. And sure as enough, there was, you know, the rem her remains. You know, she was very smart in it. There was a, it was in a, a hollow. On one, on the upper hillside, there was a tree. And then on the lower hillside, there was a old deadfall log. And she scooted up against that and put her sleeping pad down, her blanket, um, 
and uh, tried to make a little, you know, with her uh, with her backpack and her ski poles, she tried to make some type of shelter to shield her from above. We believe that she used an emergency blanket as well because the previous year Brad found one down in near that area and it was really weathered. Oh. So, you know, boots, she took her boots off, had her socks and her boots, and climbed in her sleeping bag and went to sleep and never woke up. Well, after we find, you know, her remains and it finally like soaks in and we're like, wow, this is it. This is... We found her, like mystery solved. Oh. Um, and, and we try messaging De Brad from a Garmin, from Kevin's Garmin, um, but Brad won't believe it unless he hears it from my mouth. So they send Brad a, a Garmin message. His first response is like, who is this? And I looked at Tyler and Eli and Jordan, and I was like, I gotta go call Brad right now. And me and all four of us start storming down the mountain, but me and Jordan are running, running down the mountain. What took us all day to get up to that point, we made it down in like 20 minutes at the most. I mean, we were smoking. And Tyler and Eli, you know, they're not great mountain men, I don't think, so they took a little bit more time. Well, we finally get down to the vehicles, and Tyler's on the radio begging me not to leave. <laughs> Because he wants, you know, he wants to be there when I make the call. Both of them do. I'm like, yeah, dude, sorry, but I cannot wait. I have to get to Brad. Like, I could feel Brad out there, you know, being like, where you at, bud car? What's going on? Freaking out. So finally, I make it to Marble Mount where there's cell phone reception. <coughs> and I call Brad and tell him, you know, hey, Brad. We found your girl. We found your girl. And the first thing he asks is, how do you know? And I responded, I was like, because I've seen her beautiful red hair. And he lost it. He knew then. So he's like, we're on our way right now. We'll be there tonight or tomorrow morning. I was like, all right. I was like, look, I was like, I'm going to call, you know, the sheriff's department. I'll deal with all of the, you know, dealing with them. So, next person I called was the sheriff's department. Told them that uh, we found human remains that we believed belonged to Rachel. And the dude was such a dick. How do you know it's human? Blah, 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 blah. It's kind of late to be sending anybody out there tonight and all this stuff. I was like, dude, you need to come and at least take a report. Like, you got to do something. And he's like, well, how do you know it's human remains? How do you not know, you know, it's animal remains or whatever? I was like, dude, because we've been searching for this gal for three years. Like, we know all the, what all of her gear is, you know, like, and he's like, well, is there something, is it, can you get a picture of, you know, of something up there and send to me that we can verify if it's human remains or not? And I'm, you know, and the reason why they were doubtful is because who I, you know, they, they uh, didn't care too much for me in search and rescue. When I was up there, I knew that this was going to take place. So while I was up there, I took a picture of Rachel's skull and I sent it to the, the sheriff. And he, his response was like, we'll be up there in an hour to get all the information from you in person. It took him like four and a half, five hours to get up there. We were in bed sleeping when the sheriff showed up to get statements from all of us. It was like midnight or later. So yeah, so, you know, we stayed there. Next morning we went into town, called Brad, see where he was at. They were there and I went to the Forest Service. Sheriffs were already there. 
Um, Brad was there. And, uh, and yeah, they ended up putting together a team to go and collect uh, Ray's remains. And we just sat there with Brad, supporting him and his family. And, and then she came down in a, in a body bag, and Brad was able to lay his hands on it and say goodbye. And, the mystery was finally solved and Rachel was finally going home after three years of being missing in the mountains who everyone said what was impossible. The majority of you know people were claiming that it was impossible. Um, so earlier that year we were down there searching before the road and trail was closed and I came within you know 50 feet of where she laid the year before the 2020 when I was down in there I came within another 50 to 100 feet of where she was at as you can see in these pictures of my track um, so, it was, uh, it really hit me pretty hard that I was, me, not only me personally, but a couple other people who, uh, you know, are searching with me came that close two years in a row and never found her. It goes to show how, you know, not only how deep and how thick the forest is you can walk right past someone and and not know that was the wind so from in November the family planned to do a memorial for Rachel um, after she was released from the coroner's office and cremated then they were gonna have a memorial for at her at her church over Moses Lake. So you know, being the guys who we are, we gotta gotta go over there for it. Well, it was like a few days or maybe a week that uh, I get a message from this gal saying that her father-in-law Jay Schreckengost was missing down in the southern part of Washington that he was elk hunting and went missing and search and rescue was out there searching but not coming up with anything and the family was um, not getting the best results no family ever gets the best results from search and rescue when you know their loved ones missing but I guess they were kind of like not allowing the family to search as much as they wanted to and that's understandable as well from the search and rescue point but nonetheless the first and foremost thing is what I believe is the happiness of the family and that's the foremost priority the family feels like they're not participating will come up with something to help them feel like they are participating so the gal's like hey we really want you know we really want your help you found Rachel, you've searched a lot of people, we could really use, you know, use your help. And I told her, I was like, look, I was like, you know, we're not gonna get involved unless, until after Search and Rescue has called off the mission. And, and she's like, look, no, no, no. She's like, we will, we'll do whatever to allow, to get Search and Rescue, to allow you guys to come down and search. And they wanted to, just to do it, I think it was on the weekend, to go see Ray. So I told the gal, and I was like, look, I was like, this is what we can do right now. You know, we're going to be over in Moses Lake, so we'll go down, come through there, search for a couple days. Man, then we got to go to Moses Lake for her memorial. And then when we get back, we can discuss, you know, what we can do further. Okay, so me and Clay, we bombed down there day one, 
get in touch with the family, uh, stay on the mountain. Day two, we searched um, in a total different area. It was Sunday, was gonna be Rachel's memorial. We got down there Thursday night, searched Friday, searched Saturday, staying on the mountain. Um, and it's, you know, snow on the ground, cold, tons of search and rescue people out there. People on horses, people on four wheelers, Chinook helicopters, uh, you know, uh, little uh, C500 choppers, and tons of people. And they were all searching in an area that didn't make sense to me. And as you can see in this uh, this photo, where we our track and where we searched and where eventually they found Jay. Uh, so on Saturday we sur on Sunday we searched a little bit. You know we had to take off. We met with the family and you know I told the family I was like, look, I was like, you have to get them to search this area. This is the area they need to search where Jay is. Not all the way over here towards Devil's Slide and all this bullshit. No, he's not over there. He's over in here. Whatever you have to do. And if they don't search there, or if they don't find him, once they're off the mountain, then we can come back and, you know, and find and search for Jay. And she's like, okay, okay, we'll, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. Me and Clay went to the Ray's Memorial, stayed there for a few days, then went back home. And within that time, they found Jay in the exact area where I told her family that she needed to tell them to search. So that was, you know, that was a win. We felt like it was a win because we were right down in that area and if we would have had more time there, we would have found them. But we ended up showing up at Bray's Memorial in the church, just, you know, in our search gear. <laughs> <clears throat> dirty and cold and wore out yeah it was a good thing a lot of met a lot of good people who had the greatest things to say about myself especially coming from Brad the highest praise but I made sure to you know let everybody know you know I went up and I, and I asked me to come up and say something I let everybody know I was like look I was like you know Brad is the one who led us to Rachel because he was so convinced that that fire was her when her husband didn't believe it at all so uh, in conclusion so for three years we searched for Rachel and you know there's a lot of, of accusations out there that families were actually paying us to search on the mountain that caused a lot of strife in our missions, but nonetheless, we, you know, we took those blows to the nose, proved them all wrong. Had lots of good support from not only my wife and children, but from friends and family, because we all knew that this is the ultimate gift. Like this is true charity uh, to practice is devoting oneself for others. It builds character, it builds strength, but it is some immense suffering. Suffering like you cannot imagine out there. Getting eaten by bugs, hot, smoky. You know, when we found Rachel, it was fire, full-fledged forest fire a mile away. I mean, the smoke was thick. People were having a hard time breathing. But in the end, it's all worth it. All the pain, all the suffering, all the time lost, all the money lost, still worth it. Well, I hope uh, this series of videos sheds light not only on what happened to Rachel, but what happens to thousands of people in the parks and forests and wilderness. 
thousands of people missing with no trace or no closure out there and very, very few groups who devote their personal time to resolving those cases. You know, after I got my win finding Rachel, I stepped back from searching. There was quite a few cases since then of people reaching out to me asking for help. And the most help I would give would be, you know, my advice as far as where to search and who you could reach out to and how to put together a search operations plan, things like that. Um, not really boots on the ground. I stepped back from that and will I ever get back into it? Maybe, but for now, you know, I'm focusing on my family, my time, because I've devoted five years, six, six, seven years straight of searching Sam Sayers, Rachel, Tom. Um, so I kind of hung up the spurs and searching a lot, but who knows, you know, if, uh, if something comes up close to home, of course we go out there and, you know, and help assist looking for, uh, looking for someone missing. So I really hope you guys appreciated uh, these videos. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them and I'm pretty good at answering. Uh, specific questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to not missing persons videos, but other videos that I that I drop. So thanks for watching.